And there it is, out of range. You love to see it. Uh, come on, revert. Getting a few more hertz for free doesn't sound too bad, right? Back in the days at least, overclocking your 60 hertz monitor was a pretty common practice and actually doubling the original refresh rate to 120 hertz definitely wasn't unheard of. But today with our 144 hertz and above monitors, is this still possible? And how big of an improvement can we expect with modern monitors these days? Now I have a few monitors on hand, so we're gonna find that out. So we're gonna try overclocking five different monitors, which are all pretty different monitors with different refresh rates ranging from 75Hz up to 240Hz and try to get an idea of how viable overclocking your monitor actually is these days. So let's jump right into it and start with the first monitor. I'm gonna be using Toasty Access Custom CRU here and the process actually is pretty straightforward. I just have to add a new resolution and I'm gonna use the automatic function to determine the rest of our parameters. So we just have to type in a new refresh rate. And as this is a 165Hz monitor, we're just gonna type in 166Hz and see whether it can actually handle overclocking at all or will just uh, give us an error message right away. So yeah, let's apply the new resolution. Yeah. But I can already see some artifacting going on. That's not great. So this is not really something you would actually want to use. So let's give it another try. Let's try the reduced timings, which should be a bit more forgiving. So 166 hertz. I can't see any artifacts. So 166 hertz with the reduced timings seem to actually work. So I'm gonna push it a bit farther and actually try 170 right away and there it is out of range you love to see it so i'm gonna have to use the second monitor and actually change the settings back to normal a second monitor definitely makes this so much easier so if you're gonna try overclocking make sure you have a second monitor in reach ah come on let's try 169 because why not nice actually works no artifacting so far so yeah while 169 hertz are certainly nice i guess you're not gonna notice a 4 hertz improvement with a 165 hertz monitor that's definitely not gonna happen so maybe that's because this is a 165 hertz monitor to begin with so you could argue it's kind of overclocked already maybe we have a better chance with a 144 hertz monitor so I'm gonna switch monitors and I'm gonna try that. So this is an Acer, which is a 144Hz 1440p monitor and it's kind of an older model. So this might actually increase our chances of the OC actually working. So let's try 145Hz and see whether this actually accepts overclocking at all or gives us an error message right away. Doesn't look so great, nope. Yeah, but this time it reverted on its own. That's nice, so I didn't have to get a second monitor again. So let's see if we have any success with reduced timings. Yeah, so reduced timings seem to work. So let's push it a bit further. Let's try 100 and, I don't know, 148 hertz. No signal. So let's go down to 147, no signal. So we definitely already know that there isn't a lot of overclocking range. So let's try to dial it back one hertz more. Does it work? It does. So 146 it is, I guess. So getting a mere two hertz improvement and risking artifacts and whatnot really isn't worth the time and effort doing this. So maybe that's because these are all high refresh rate monitors to begin with. So we might have a bit more success uh, with a 60 or 75 hertz monitor. So I'm gonna change monitors again and be right back. 
All right, this is a 75 Hertz monitor, so we might be a little bit more successful here. Let's try this. 76 Hertz, and it works. No artifacting so far, so that's nice. So let's push it a bit higher, 76, add it. Again, using the automatic timings and 77. Let's use 78, 79. 79 does not work. So let's hope this reverts the setting on its own. All right, time for a second monitor again. There it is. Let's actually give it another try. 79 hertz with reduced timings. Yeah, seems to actually work. So that's another four hertz gain, but this time it's a 75 hertz monitor, so you could argue that four hertz is a bit more of an improvement. Still a very small improvement, but yeah, four hertz for free. There you have it. I'm not sure if it's worth the effort, but at least it's relatively seen, it's a bit more of an improvement. Let's try a completely different class of monitors and let's go to 240 Hertz and see whether this makes any differences. So this is the Omen X25 and this is a very fast 240 Hertz TM panel. Let's see if we can make it any faster. Input signal not found. So it does not work. Let's give it another shot with reduced timings this time. 241 hertz again, reduced timings. Well, that's disappointing. Not a single hertz. So yeah, this might be because this actually is a monitor with a G-Sync module, which can be a bit quirky with those custom resolution utilities sometimes. So let me actually get a 240 hertz monitor that is no G-Sync module monitor and let's try it again. So this is another 240 Hertz monitor, but this time without a GC module. So we might have a slightly better chance of this actually working. I'm gonna start by using the automatic timings and 241 Hertz. Nope. So let's try reduce timings. That seems to work. Actually, yes. No artifacts so far. So let's put it a bit higher. Reduce timings, 242 hertz. Input not supported. A single hertz. That's it. Safe to say that this is definitely 100% not worth it for this monitor because a single hertz, a 240 hertz monitor, this is something you 100% not gonna see. Now, that was rather disappointing if you ask me. About a 5% improvement was the best we could achieve, which I think really isn't worth the effort. Of course, there were just a handful of monitors, so there might be some models out there that can achieve much higher overclocks. Let me know if you have actually found any monitors like this that can do better than the ones I've tested. Thanks for watching, man sieht sich im nächsten Video.